Imagine a national team starring Oblak from Slovenia, Modric from Croatia, Dzeko from Bosnia-Herzegovina and Jovic from Serbia. Well, 30 years ago that would have been possible because they'd all have come from the same country, Yugoslavia. A state which no longer exists, but its footballers still impress. The countries that used to make up Yugoslavia produce talent after talent after talent. Why is that? Croatia even reached a World Cup final. A country of only four million people, beating Argentina, England and Russia. In 1998, Croatia finished third at their World Cup debut. Debut? Why debut? Because until the early 90s, Croats were part of Yugoslavia, along with Slovenes, Bosnians, Serbs, Montenegrins and Macedonians. Yugoslavia always had good footballers. But war tore the country apart in 1991. Did this mean the end of football there? Boy, it did not. Sure, none of the successor states' national teams are as successful as Croatia. Now, compare Serbia's population to those of other important export countries. Another former Yugoslav Republic, Bosnia-Herzegovina, made it to the World Cup in 2014. And Northern Macedonia to Euro 2021. And they're not just damn good at football. The region of former Yugoslavia has produced over 80 NBA players as of early 2021. Compared to Nigeria's 24, Australia's 26, France's 36 and Canada's 51. In handball, the World Player of the Year award has been won by players from former Yugoslavia five times. Only the French were awarded that title more often, with Nikola Karabatic alone winning three. Pardon? Well, he was born in Serbia, but let's not go there. Back to football. How many ex-Yugoslavs are on the team you support? Probably plenty if it's in Serie A, which boasts a record 47 of them. Why are people from this region so good? Well, first of all, former Yugoslavia always was a true footballing nation. The sport was already popular there before World War II. Yugoslavia played at the first World Cup in Uruguay in 1930. They even reached the semi-final. After World War II, the country became communist, but soon fell out with the Soviet Union. It shows a third way between communism and capitalism. So, Yugoslavia also looked westward in many ways. Also, when it came to football. Yugoslavia's unique Cold War experience uh, is really one of the key reasons why football is so successful. Another factor in that success in that period is the extent to which the regime invests in sport. By the 50s and 60s, Yugoslavia really has cutting edge sporting infrastructure. This paid off. Yugoslavia reached the World Cup quarterfinals in 1954 and 1958. They won the Olympics in 1960 and came in fourth at the 1962 World Cup. They made the finals of Euro 1960 and 68. Remarkable successes, being a country of 20 million inhabitants only. At club level, Yugoslavia's big four had established themselves as powerhouses. Dinamo Zagreb, Hajduk Split and Belgrade sides Red Star and Partizan. Transfers start to happen on a fairly regular basis. Um, teams such as Hajduk Split, for example, become an import-export company. Because this is so successful and so many players are going abroad, the Yugoslav Football Association brings in this rule that uh, players aren't allowed to, to leave the country until their late 20s. Not a very popular policy, but it did ensure the domestic Yugoslav league was of a high standard. From the cadet level, from the age of 14, basically these players played together on a very regular basis and got to know each other. And as you know, most football fans know, chemistry is a very important aspect of a successful team. Resulting in a strong league with well-supported domestic players, big clubs succeeding in Europe and a formidable Yugoslav national team. At the 1974 World Cup here in West Germany, it was seen as a squad that could maybe even win the title. 
They started well, nil-nil against reigning world champions Brazil and a 9-0 blowout over the year. But then things went south. Rumors and legends of unpaid bonuses and fights over sponsorship still swirl today. Not so communist, right? But hey, third way, remember? Still, Yugoslavia had become a force to be reckoned with in football and other sports and a source of major pride for the population. In the 80s, a new generation of footballers turned this to gold. They won the 1987 Youth World Championship in Chile. Players like Boban, Šuker, Jarni, Mijatovic and Prosinecki came to light. They left their mark on 90s football at Real, Barça, Sevilla, Milan and others. But they didn't have time to make their mark as a national team. Hatred was being stirred up among Yugoslavia's different ethnicities. Violence at a game between Dinamo Zagreb and Red Star Belgrade heralded the war that would follow. In 1991, the war started. Yugoslavia fell apart. How did this affect this very talented generation and football as a whole in the region? Most incredibly, just weeks before the war began, Red Star Belgrade still won the equivalent of the Champions League in May 1991. But shortly after, just like thousands of civilians, footballers were leaving the region en masse. Red Star Belgrade lost nearly their entire team overnight after the 1991 triumph. Their players left for Real, Milan, Inter, Roma and others. It wasn't just Red Star, other top clubs also struggled and have yet to fully recover. What we see um, across the board is an exodus of talent anywhere where they can get a contract, um, where uh, they don't have to stay in the, uh, in the conflict situation. We're seeing players do that. Um, and we see the creation of multiple weak leagues. Despite all this, one of the new national teams managed to rise from the ashes of Yugoslavia quite quickly. After its independence, Croatia joined FIFA. Initially, they were ranked 125th in the world. Only two years later, they had moved up to 62nd. And another two years later, they played at Euro 1996 and made it to the quarterfinals. Why did they develop so fast? Sure, they had players that had won the 87 Youth World Championship. Players like Igor Stimac and Tavar Šuker were now in their prime. But there was another critical factor triggered by the war, identity. They were not just considered ambassadors of identity or sort of this newly forming Croatian identity, but they also saw themselves as ambassadors of identity. They felt some particular and sort of extra special motivation uh, for the role that they were in. Football played a very specific a role as, as a sacred center of society. At the 1998 World Cup, Croatia even came in third. Although they had to wait 20 years for similar success, second place at the 2018 World Cup, patriotic impetus is still considered a reason for Croatia's outsized performance. I gledali su naše u Francuskoj, ako gledate Luku Modrića, Čoruku, Lovrena, znači to su sve dječaci iz ratnih sredina. Znači oni su rođeni u vrijeme rata, imaju tu traumu gdje su morali pobići sa svog 
doma, bili su izbjeglice, bili su gladni, bili su žene. But Serbs and Montenegrins came back, now as Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and made it to World Cup 1998 and Euro 2000. They too had their share of the golden generation, like Predrag Mijatović, and players from European Cup winning Red Star, Sinisha Mihailović or Dejan Savičević. Partizanova, omladinska škola, čak u periodu 90-ih i 2000-ih naročito bila još jača nego u bivšoj Jugoslavi. I oni imaju skautsku službu koja je fantastična, skupljaju talente po čitavoj Srbiji. Serbia's production of youth talent is so massive that the country is listed as the world's fourth largest export nation of footballers, which is often a recipe for club survival. To znači napravi igrača koga možeš da prodaš i od toga ulaži u preživljavanje futbolskog kluba. Jedan igrač koji vredi 10 miliona evra donosi jednoj crvenoj zvezdi godinu ili godinu i po dana funkcioniše. Japan, Thailand, South Korea, Colombia, Serbs can be found anywhere, not just the top leagues. Talent abounds in Serbia and the global football market is buying. But talent is also imported to the region. Take Croatia's national team. Ivan Rakitic was born in Switzerland, former defender Joe Šimunić in Australia. The Croatian diaspora is uh, significant. Um, it's a country that has uh, experienced several waves of emigration. And here, uh, the scouting system uh, was very good in identifying potential players for the national team of Croatian origin. Naša diaspora broji gotovo skoro isto od 4 miliona Hrvata i oni su jako emotivno vezani za Hrvatsku. Just to compare, if other countries were to have a diaspora that big, there would be up to 200 million Germans, 400 million Brazilians and, well, 3 billion Indians. Kosovo too builds its football on these pillars, relying on patriotic impetus and recruiting from a large diaspora. Before Corona, in late 2019, I went to Kosovo, UEFA's youngest member. Kosovo was once an autonomous province of Serbia and declared independence in 2008. It was admitted to UEFA in 2016 and almost qualified for Euro 2021. Kosovo! Kosovo! War torn and still not recognized by some major countries such as Russia or China, in Kosovo football is clearly much more than just football. It's, it's a way for us to represent ourselves to the world and uh, keeping in mind that we're very excited to see our team play, I feel like it really has a an important meaning to us. It even made me want, want to watch football. Add to this pride the diaspora factor. Okay, Milo Trashica was actually born in Kosovo. But goalkeeper Muric in Switzerland or defender Pacharara in Germany. Kosovo's football team is also about nation building. And with all the enthusiasm, this seems to work so far. Finally, Northern Macedonia qualified for Euro 2021. This former Yugoslav Republic did not come out of nowhere either. A continuation of the Yugoslav school with an emphasis on good youth work. Schon 2017, Macedonien hat sich für Europameisterschaft äh, U21 in Polen qualifiziert. Viele Fußballer aus dieser Generation äh, sind jetzt in die A-Mannschaft. Yugoslavia has left more than just its traces in today's football. It laid the foundation for an unstoppable production of talent and some great success against the odds. The wars fueled the powerful football passion in the region even more. National teams also rely on players born abroad. And keep in mind, not everyone picks the ex-Yugoslav side. Take Marko Arnautovic, Haris Seferovic, or of course Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Can Croatia win the 2022 World Cup or Serbia the 2024 Euro? And what about the others? Finally, let me repeat another question. How many players from former Yugoslav republics are there on your team? Let me know in the comments. Peace.